in here is Charity's demo class, and these little areas underneath here are channels. And within the, each channel, we have different tabs, and you can see the channel name corresponds from here um, up to here as well. So I'm just going to navigate through some of these areas here, and we're going to go into um, my files within my accessibility channel here. And you will see that I have a PowerPoint in here that's called Who Am I? So one of the first things that we want to ensure is that the content that we are delivering to our students or to um, parents or community members is accessible. Just by looking at people who are not able to determine a possible um, learning difference that they might have or a learning disability. And so we want to ensure that the content that we are delivering and sharing with them is accessible for all users. And so what we're going to do is come into um, the PowerPoint here from our Teams environment. And I'm going to um, let you guys know that I will be doing this all um, from the online environment. Um, and so this is one of the reasons that I'm doing this is because being in the online environment, it doesn't matter what device you're on, you'll have the same functionality here. So this is going to be universal throughout. So I'm going to go up here into um, my review tab and I have this area right here that's called check accessibility and so I can click on this button and it's going to immediately show me um, all of the areas that might not be accessible for those that might be using a screen reader or any additional um, tool that they may need for um, accessible purposes and so here you can see that we need to check the reading order on slide three and so this is slide three the good old kelly williams um, has put some information in here and so this just shows me that i would need to take a look at how a screen reader would actually read this um, the other thing that you really want to make sure of is that you have what we call um, alternative text on your pictures and if you right click on your pictures you can check that alternative text you can generate a description for you however obviously the computer isn't going to know well enough as well as you do what these pictures are of sometimes they're just general um, descriptive images and you can just select that checkbox there or you can actually type in here and your alternative text is set so that when a screen reader comes in here and takes a look at this slide it's going to read what you have written there in that alternative text. Now we can also do this not only within PowerPoint, but we can also do it within Word. And so I'm going to go um, into my Geography 101 document. And this again is a regular Word document. And now there's an additional step here with taking a look at documents within Teams. And I really do like it because it allows me to take a look at this read view. So if I really don't want to do anything with it, I just want to take a quick glance, I can do that and it doesn't open the full functionality of Word. But then when I click on the ellipses, I call this a sleeping snowman because I'm from Minnesota and we build snowmen and they have the three little sections and when it's fallen over, it's the sleeping snowman. But you can clip, click on the ellipses and open up this in the browser. I'm going to, again, stay in the online environment. And so um, this is our Word online. And just like PowerPoint, we're able to come up here to our review tab and we can check accessibility here. One of the first things that I learned about accessibility in Word was the easy task of using styles. That was something that I didn't use previously and I should have been using all of these years, but it was just one of those things where I liked to take a look and choose the font that I wanted. And maybe I came in here and I typed in geography. Um, I'm going to close my accessibility check here, but geography 102. Okay. And I wanted to increase the size and this is typically what we will do is we will, as users will go in and we'll say oh I want that to be 16 size font and maybe change the color to this light blue to kind of match this and you get the idea right it's not consistent but when we use styles what this does is it allows for those screen readers that set this format and this the style settings and so it's consistent and it's uniform and it's going to easily be read by those additional tools and so i like to use the headings again you have a title you're heading one you're heading two this is also great practice to help your students write outlines for research papers um, my son was a very visual student he has to have these styles in order to help him put his thoughts down on paper 
Another thing that really benefits him in putting thoughts on paper is because he has a hard time taking the ideas from his head and actually writing them on paper, but he can talk to anybody. And I think he gets that from me. But what he has here is this dictation tool with Word Online. And so we turn the dictation on and this allows him, we say, yes, we want it to allow to use our microphone. And from here on out, he is able to put his words from his head onto paper and not have to think about the writing process. It doesn't do sentence structure, but it gets all of his ideas from his head. He can have a perfect conversation with me and get those ideas onto paper and then go back later and worry about and fix the sentence structure. And so this is a great way for students to be able to start getting their ideas just written down on paper. And when we click dictate, it stops it, it's a toggle on, toggle off. And now um, we have all of our um, verbiage right here that we just recently spoke. And so now another feature that I have within Word Online is you know what, let's take this and translate this. Maybe English is not my primary language, but I can come up here to translate and now I can choose by selection. So if I select a certain amount of text or if I want to do the whole document, I can change my font and my, my text to Spanish by the click of a simple little button. And the view that this brings up is I, I really like it. Um, it's clear, it's concise, and it gives me some other options. And we'll just wait for this to translate. I'm guessing it's having a hard time with my <laughs> non-correct sentence structure of my dictation. So let me cancel that real quick and I will delete my dictation there. Okay, and let's try this again. We will translate here. Okay, and it's gonna bring up a whole new window and you will see the whole document now in Spanish and it actually did do my verbiage here as well. So it just took a little bit longer, but here now I have this document in complete Spanish. And so I have some options here. I have accessibility mode so I can actually turn accessibility mode on and I have some other features that are right within this browser. And so I can start annotating and drawing over some things and highlighting if I would like to do that. But even better, what this does is it allows us to go right into the immersive reading tools. If you have not ever used immersive reader, these are absolutely fabulous, fabulous tools. But also notice from here, I can show the original as well. So I'm going to show the original because there are a lot of tools here that I want to show you within the immersive reading tools. And again, if you haven't experienced these, I really want you guys to get a, um, a good look at them. So we're going to go under our view tab. OK, and we're going to go to immersive reader. And now right here we have some different options. You will see mine came up with a black screen. This is one of the themes that you can choose, but you have some settings down here where as a user you can increase the voice speed or decrease the voice speed. This is great for those new readers that are maybe struggling with some various different um, words and they need to sound them out and take a little bit more time. But I also have the ability to change from the male and female voice. And as this plays, you see that it highlights each word as it goes through and reads this to you. Now I have some additional options. Up here we have text preferences and I can increase the text size. So I will not have to get those readers that I forgot in my car and I can increase my text size. But those students that have visual impairments, this is a great thing also because they can increase the font size all on their own device. I as a teacher don't have to do anything. Another nice thing is that we have the increased spacing. And what that does is it increases the space between the letters, but it also increases the space between the words. And you can see the difference here. This allows those students that are dyslexic and dysgraphic to differentiate between the words a little bit easier. Our fonts, we only have three fonts. And so for those that really like these fun, really cool fonts, that's nice, but is that font accessible for all users? To ensure that that is the case, we have three choices, Calibri, Sitka, and Comic Sans. 
back in the day, if you remember back in Word, and it wasn't that long ago, I can even say probably 2003, um, the default font for Word was Times New Roman. Well, if you've looked recently, that is no longer the case. Our default font in Word is now Calibri because that is um, a more accessible font to read. Here we have the themes and you notice I have that black theme selected. I like to read if I'm spending a lot of time on my computer during the day, which I typically do. I like to have this dark mode um, and this is what brings in the dark mode for me with my learning tools. But if you just like the color pink, you could read all of your text and information from a pink background as well. We come up to this next one and our, this is our grammar options. We have the ability to turn on syllables, so this will help readers and early readers to sound out words. This would have been great when I was learning to read. I remember my teacher saying sound it out. Well, I had a hard time with that, <laughs> so this is a great way for students to be able to break up these words and sound out land forms and see the syllables in there. We can also do parts of speech and turning on parts of speech. We have nouns and we have verbs. OK, and maybe we're doing verbs and adjectives. Now this is great. We can turn all of these on, but if you have somebody that is red, green, colorblind, they're not going to be able to dis differentiate between these necessarily. So we have the ability to also show labels and now we can actually see the letters that are representing the verbs and our adjectives and we can see those right next to the word and also in the text. Nice addition to those tools. This last section over here is our reading preferences. For those students that have a hard time tracking from line to line as they're reading, we can do what's called line focus. And we can put this line here, and when this reads, it'll highlight every word, but also isolate that individual line. And we can move that line up as we need. As students get better, they can increase the number of lines, okay? Or we can completely turn the line focus off. We also have the picture dictionary, so you can click on mountain and you get a picture of what that is and you can see what a mountain may look like that will help differentiate those words. And we also have translate right here within the immersive reading tools. So anywhere you see immersive reading tools, you're going to be able to translate that text. Now we can do it by full um, text here. So when I click this, you're going to see um, not only this, but I can see the original and when I click mountain and I click Spanish. OK, all of these words you can see are now in this picture dictionary. OK, those are your immersive reading tools and they are found in Word. They are found in um, OneNote, but I also want to show you another piece of our team that you may not be aware that these tools are and that is in our assignments. So if I go to my general channel, because that is where my assignments are located, I can go under assignments. And if I choose one of my assignments, I'm going to show you what the students will see. If I go into my US map activity, here's my student view. And you will see here, I have the immersive reading tools right here. So with my instructions, my students have the ability to have those instructions read to them, or they can choose any of those accessible features. One of my other favorite things within our announcements um, here is that within your announcements, you can also come up here and click on that sleeping snowman and you can come down to your immersive reading tools. They're built in here for every announcement, but also you have the ability to do this translate and you can see my original here. Um, so when I come up here and I go to translate, nothing really happens, but if you notice this little icon right here, if I right click on this icon, I have set the Spanish um, language to be this, the language that I want it translated to. And so when I say translate to Spanish, you will notice that not only my announcement here gets translated, but everything within my team's environment is translated to Spanish, okay? And so it puts this little icon up here and you can see it working right now that the translator is trying to translate all of my options for me and it might take a little bit. And so we may not necessarily want to wait for that because I know we're getting close on time. But another thing, and I do need to make sure that I get this back to English <laughs> because I may not be able to get myself back. Well, it's going to work. 
Okay, I'm going to translate it to English. Here's where you can change. And I'm just going to keep it as is. Are we back to English? Yes, we are. Okay, so let's go to my notes. And I want to show you here as well. Within OneNote, you will see that we have translation. And I have to laugh because everyone says math is a universal language. Um, but for some of us, it's really not. And so even though math itself might be um, a universal language, the text and instructions that we have for specific problems may not be. And so when I come here and I solve for X, I can show my steps for solving linear, linear equations. And if you notice, ta-da, here are immersive reading tools right here as well. So even with our math within OneNote, we have the ability to use the immersive reading tools. Um, one last thing that I wanted to show you, and I wasn't sure if it was going to populate for me, was that we have the ability to use immersive reading tools within Minecraft as well. And so any board, any picture that you have um, will, and I'm not actually going to open that because I think it might take me a little bit too long, and I know we're running a little short on time. So I'm going to go back to my team here. Okay. And I'm going to go back into my accessibility posts and I want to share just a couple of things with you. And Jen, I have given Jennifer some um, links that she can post into the meeting chat for you. There are so many resources um, with accessibility, but this is one that I wanted to share with you. It's just some immersive reader feedback. And if you haven't seen this before, this is from an educator in Argentina. Um, wrote back to the Microsoft team and just said, I wanted to let you know that today a mom spoke to me and she started crying. Her son was finally able to read on his own thanks to the immersive reader. I'm currently changing the lives of so many children. And this is really why we have these tools. If you are not familiar with where these immersive tools are in some of our learning tools, this is an image of what we call the periodic table of learning tools. This is the latest version, I believe. It was as of um, July, no, excuse me, January 2020. And so you can see where the specific learning tools are, the translation, the dictation, and all of the tools that it is included in all of those areas. And so um, this is another one of those examples, but I wanted to leave you guys with this thought. I'm not sure if you guys know Marley Matlin, but she is um, an Academy Academy Award winning actress. She is deaf and she has been in so many different movies and I just love her to death. She does not allow her um, being deaf to be what she calls a disability. It's just a difference for her. Um, but one of the quotes that she stated was, no one should have to ask for access. It should just be there. And I wholeheartedly agree. So. The only thing that I can ask from you guys is that when you are creating content for your students and for your parents that you keep accessibility in mind and do the very best that you can to ensure that all learners can use and learn within the ability and the options that they need. And so with that, Jen, are there any questions that we have? I know that was fast and furious. <laughs> I think people are just in awe of all the amazing tools that you're showing. Um, I, we did get the question if it could dictate or if it could translate while you're dictating. And I said I didn't think it could, that you had to translate after. And then Scott mentioned the fact that you could use the translator tool and then yeah. just copy that in. So I didn't know if you had any other suggestions on that as well. Right. As far as using the dictation tool itself and translating into a different language at the time, that functionality isn't there. But like Scott said, the translator tool or doing using translate.it online or installing the translator app, you can definitely do that and have a conversation one on one with just the use of your cell phone. So if I'm speaking English and I'm talking to somebody that speaks um, Portuguese, we can choose those languages and I hold the button on my side and speak English and it translates to Portuguese right away for that person across from me. So there are ways to to use those translation tools and translation. I could do a whole another session on translation all in itself. And then just where um, you know you showed the online tools um, tonight today, but are there these are accessible in other programs do you yes want to yep. they are this? they are available on the desktop office app as well um and you can see um let me bring up this picture again so you can see where these these tools are available here this will be a good visual if i can get it to come up again there we go 
I'll make it a little bigger so you guys can see. I know that's kind of blurry, but um, this is where all of these um, learning tools are available. So if you want the read aloud feature, it's in all the versions of OneNote, um, Word Online, Word Desktop, Word Mac, um, Word iPad, Outlook Web, Outlook Desktop, Teams, Flipgrid, Flipgrid iOS, Android, I mean, Whiteboard, Forms, um, Minecraft, EDU, Office Lens, and the Edge browser. So there's all sorts of different places that these are available for you. That's awesome. I, I think everybody is just loving seeing all of these accessibility options. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to type them in the chat. You can come off a of mute too and ask if you'd like. It says, is there a kid friendly video to send to students on how to use um, these accessibility tools? There are some great resources in the educator community, but I do have a link that I can also grab um, and put into the meeting chat after we are done. Yes, and I will share that with everybody too, um, that there's a short little video about accessibility. And then uh, do you, are there ways that you recommend showing this to students and families? You know, just making them aware. Um, when, when I started working with teachers to begin with and with my own two, I showed them OneNote at first because that was an organizational tool as well as a tool for them to use those immersive reading tools and just get used to them. Um, but now that they are so many different places, it depends on what specific tool you're looking for. If you're looking for that dictation or if you're looking for um, the line focus or the read aloud, you know, it just depends on what specific tool you're looking for. But if you were to start with OneNote, that's going to really hit a lot of them for you right away. And then Eileen said, is it appropriate for eight year olds? Absolutely. <laughs> we have little kids, little four and five year olds that are just learning how to read or even first graders that are reading at, you know, a preschool or a kindergarten level and fourth graders that are reading at a second grade level and they're starting to use these immersive learning tools and their reading um, comprehension and their words per minute are increasing within a school year and significantly and staying in that same place. So they're not going back, which is amazing. The research is just amazing to see all of the results by using these tools. And then Rhonda, yes, these videos that um, that we're doing on, with NCC Live it will be posted to our NCC YouTube channel after the fact. Yes, absolutely. They'll be on our YouTube channel. We'll have to get them uploaded there, but give us some time. We'll get there. I know, um, I believe Tammy's and Jennifer's are up there now, I think, or they should be soon if they're not. Are there any other questions that you guys have? They said they are posted already. So yes, so I think both Tammy and my uh, recordings are already posted on the YouTube channel. This one will be posted um, as soon as we can get it there. And yep. Scott's will be up there as well. And if you are not knowing what's coming up next, Wednesday the 8th, which is tomorrow, Megan's going to be sharing some chat, private chats and post communications within Teams. So if you're a little confused about the difference between a private conversation and a team conversation within Teams, tune in to the same time at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, and she's going to help us out with that one. Absolutely. That's going to be a good one. If anybody else has more questions, please put them in the chat or come off mute. We really appreciate you guys joining us today. Yes, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Julie, it was good to see you. What is the YouTube channel? I'm gonna find the link and put it up there for Thanks, you. Jen. And yes, I will find that other resource as well, the video. Are there any other questions out there? Um, hey, Charity, this is Bobby. Hey. Um, and I believe actually we are moving Megan's to Thursday. Oh, we are. OK, great. So Thursday so, the 9th. Yep. Yeah, so that was a last minute change this morning. Um, we're actually tomorrow going to co-host a webinar with Simple K-12. That's oh, free for everybody as well. 
So we're going to move Megan's to the same time just on Thursday. Perfect. Thank you, Bobby, for letting us know that. That's awesome. And I'll put the link to that webinar in case anyone wants to join in the chat window. Great. Thanks, Bobby. I appreciate it. Thanks, Charity. Hey, Charity, this is Scott. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure you can. It's more of a philosophical one. Anybody else can chime in, but um, talking about using the dictation tool, mm -hmm. I sometimes get pushback from my teachers or other schools that I'm working with and talking to that they um, are a bit old school and saying, well, students need to learn how to type and you know all this kind of stuff. Do you have a a good argument or a good comeback for that? And I'm talking about more like students that don't struggle with you know you know physical you know uh, inabilities that kind of thing any kind of challenges like that just your your average everyday student how do you kind of present that argument right well that's <laughs> that's a great question scott and it is quite the debate you know students need to have typing skills i get that um and i guess from my standpoint i'm looking at not even you know my son doesn't isn't diagnosed with a learning different difference or a disability but he's just one of those students that just he has so much to say, but just can't put it on paper, you know? Um, and so for that, I guess I would rather be, I'm more worried about the student learning and getting the concepts and understanding the process than worrying about whether he can type, but that's my personal thing. Um, and that's my philosophy. So I don't know, I'm gonna have some that will agree with me and not agree with me. I do think that typing skills and writing skills are very important and we need to, to learn how to do that. And another reason that I like to use the styles within Word, um, because that does help make those outlines for a research paper. Um, but, you know, I think it's it's in a here and there and, a, you know, kind of one of those decisions. I really didn't answer that very well for you, Scott, but that's kind of where I'm coming from is I really want my students to um, do the purposeful work, if that makes sense, and not have to struggle as much I mean, I, I don't know. I would rather them be able to get the thoughts onto paper than have to worry about them learning how to type at that moment. They're going to have typing skills. They will learn in the writing process. You know, they might have to do some editing and that kind of thing, which is going to require them to do some typing skills as well. So it might be a combination of both. Scott? Yeah, no, I, that was a great answer. You answered it better than you gave yourself credit for. That's <laughs> totally what. Totally what I think too. I think it's more about the the learning and them sharing what they know versus can they do the 10 finger typing kind of thing, right? Very good. Scott? Yes. This is Greg. Hey, Greg. <laughs> Howdy. I was going to say basically the same thing. What are we assessing? Are we assessing their typing skills? Is that what totally. you're trying to grade? And if not, then let them dictate. And I always reminded teachers when I'm in their classrooms working with them and they're saying, oh, they don't need those tools. They need to learn. It's like, yeah, 40 years ago, my teacher told me that I would never walk around with a calculator in my pocket. And yet <laughs> I have so much more. Yeah. yeah. No, I appreciate it. Thank, thanks to both of you for chiming in. I appreciate that. No, that's a great question, Scott. Thanks for bringing it up. Any other questions out there? I think we're clear of questions, Charity. Thank you so All much right. for sharing today. Yes, thank you everyone for taking time out of your schedules. Um, happy hand washing, be safe, be smart, and we'll see you tomorrow for another, a new session, and also on Thursday with Megan. Same time, same channel. <laughs> thank you everybody. Thanks guys.